So, Jim, good to have you with us. It's, Thank you. It's good to be here, Losha. And where are you at right now in the world? Oh, I'm in Russia. <laughs> when did your food forest journey start? I woke up in 2007 in several different ways. I Previous to that, I had started a mortgage company that did about $1.3 billion in revenue. I bought a boat, lived on the ocean for a year, and then I found Costa Rica where I moved. I met my wife. Um, we had our first two daughters and I red pilled. I learned what was happening in the world and I learned permaculture all at the same time. So 2007 was the start of it all. Oh, that's interesting because 2007 was the start of my all. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I, went to, I went to Mexico to Steve Kochler's flying concrete workshop in San Miguel de Allende. Which teaches wow. that teaches how to build with Gaudi techniques on a smaller scale, not like you know grandiosa, but like on a home scale. Um, yeah, yeah. You can Google Timorlandia in San Miguel de Allende. Uh, Timorlandia. Uh, it's quite a, quite a fairy tale they've built there. Yeah, we've seen these sites, these types of demonstrations of how we can do it are all over the world. Right? It's just a matter of shining a big light on them so that more people realize what's possible and then we change the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, well, you know, would like to have the conversation today with you going into more like how practically can we change the world? Because I thought, I, you know, I fell in love with the food forest dream uh, back in 2011 and, and, and permaculture and uh, uh, I moved to a farm in 2011 and I made a mess of it because I um, went too big. You know, I've heard about, I went on a workshop with John Jevons who mm -hmm. spoke about double digging and even triple digging. So I double dug uh, with my laborers uh, half a hectare and the first, ra and didn't plant it fast enough. And, uh, you know, the first big rains, my entire garden washed down to bedrock. You know, wow. all mulch, mulch, like uh, half a foot of mulch, everything was gone because I was on clay soil and I didn't, uh, you know, so we gone too big too soon. And that was my lesson was food forest gardening, start small. Yeah. Uh, could you, you know, comment on that? If you, you, you know, how did you start with the start small or did you also go gigantic, you know? I, yes. So the, the, toughest principle was, um, you know, make small incremental changes <laughs> over time. Knowing what I know about what's going on in the world right now, uh, I did the same thing. We went full on. I learned it and I just went nuts full on with it. Now, it started in Costa Rica where we bought a whole fruit tree nursery. We bought the whole thing. We just said, I'll take all of it. <laughs> And then we, which, you know, wasn't a ton of money back and it was like $30,000. And we had all these hundreds and hundreds of different fruit trees and berry bushes and all the stuff. And we started putting them all over the land. Now, because we had a pretty big space, it, 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 it worked out actually pretty well. M most of those fruits are still thriving today. Um, but we didn't know, know a lot of stuff. So we did have, you know, quite a few failures as well because we didn't start in incrementally. We didn't start small. We just went for it. Do I regret it? In that case, not really, because the losses, the, what we gained out of it was so much more than what we lost out of it. Mm -hmm. um, now, in, here in Florida, we have a different situation where we started with a flat, almost flat cattle pasture. And we were developing this whole, it was, we have 51 acres and about 22 acres is developable land. So we dug a four acre pond, it's 25 feet deep. And we took the material from that pond, which is a lot of material. And we spread that material out and we raised up the other land by six feet. So the, the dirt that we started with here that I'm sitting on now was on average, it was three meters underground. It was dead. There was no life in it. Mm -hmm. So we started with a blank canvas and we layered, we got mulch, we got all the nitrogen fixers, and we started putting legumes all over the place. And now about 23 months later, we have a thriving food forest that is just wow. spectacular. Yeah. 
obviously it's important to note uh, to the listeners that uh, not all over the world do things go really fast. Although with permaculture methods, we can accelerate things uh, a hell of a lot. Really, we, we can really, it's close to magic. But, you know, uh, Florida is very different to like uh, soils that are frozen seven months of the year, you know. So you're winning that. <laughs> That you got that fast, uh, yeah, because the composting methods that, are, that were working for me in South Africa, I lived in, in South Africa for 25 years, they're not working here. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm mulched here, and I, again, I, I killed it, almost everything, because, and then I had to rip up all the grass out so the things could breathe, because, yeah. because I mulched too uh, early in May. The, the soil didn't get warm. So by me uh, mulching, I stopped the sunlight from warming it up. So I basically planted the seeds in the cold ground. I thought, May, I'm hot. Everything is hot. You know, it can't get hotter than this, but the soil is still cool. So what worked here does not work there. And again, I had to pull all the mulch off, although I'm a big, you know, propagator of mulch. So um, how's your experience been with different... Um, have you just been in warm climates or have you tried anything up north? So our team is in every climate, pretty much every climate in the world. And what we do is we come together and we talk about our failures. The failures that we've had here have been by planting understory plants in a brand new food forest with no shade. Right. So the miracle berries and the Jabba Kaba and some of the perennial lettuces and stuff you can see that they're suffering, they're sunburned. And in some cases, they're just toasted. So our problem was almost the opposite of that, is we didn't provide enough shade soon enough. All right, so so yeah, that's what we learned. You know, permaculture is just constant learning. There's infinite amounts of stuff to learn. Another thing I learned is we planted bananas in rows, and then we planted bananas in clumps. In, in groups, like circles, mm -hmm. the bananas that we planted in tight groups grew three to four times faster than the bananas that we planted in rows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, in my time of researching bananas and gray water from Brad Lancaster, I actually learned about the banana pit that you make like a horseshoe type of thing and then you just throw all your gray water right in there with mulch and sticks yeah. and like in this hole and they just piggyback each other now that's yeah. interesting so the, the the one tree supports another and so yeah. on yeah okay yeah. so jim i'd like to actually um so i just i learned from jeff lawton i've got his online uh, online course and then i took uh, martin crawford's agroforestry course awesome. you, you're aware of Ma Ma martin crawford I am, yes. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen the chorus, but I heard it's fantastic. Yeah, he's also a wizard, and I got his book and um, to, to, uh, uh, and the guy who wrote the book with him. Um, anyway, it's it's quite a deep subject, and I believe that food forest is amazing long term structure. But I also want to mention that I don't think it's for everybody. Like I very soon realized that every tree I touch, I kill, and uh, it's like I just. Uh, I just uh, may maybe it's because of I was just too frantic, um, but I soon realized that I'm far better with bioarchitecture than planting. So it, it's interesting that although we have dream of a food forest garden, that that Garden of Eden, we all dream of it, Jim. But uh, I, I think Socrates' phrase "Know thyself" should also come in very close. So, could you, any thoughts on that? Or, or have you found like everybody can just do the food forest? Well, I guess I don't grow anything, right? We design it and we add layers of support. And then everything grows itself from there on out. Like we, from now on, we could walk away from our food forest and come back in 30 years. And it would be a jungle of food that would have spread hundreds of miles, right? Maybe even thousands of miles because of the wind and the rain and the birds coming in and planting seeds. So I, I like to boil it down to the one fruit tree guild because people say, what's a food forest? 
Well, it's a combination of plants. It's a community of plants that support each other and balance each other and so on. So, but that's kind of hard for people to conceive of. Let's just start with one peach tree, mm -hmm. right? So you got one peach tree, you plant it in the right location with the proper drainage and you put a guild around it, right? You might have some comfrey and some perennial peanut and some sunshine mimosa, and you might have a few other plants right in the vicinity. And if you do it right, then, and get it established, right? The first year is the most important year. It's like a baby, right? Once that root system starts establishing and spreading out, um, then there's nothing left to do. Um, unless there's some kind of climactic event or some toxins that come into the area or something like that. But if not, and it's normal, you know, everything else is kind of normal, then you just let it go forever and your great, great grandkids can be eating peaches off that tree. Oh, that's amazing. That's really amazing. So, so it's about uh, understanding how to do things right. Um, yeah. I think the biggest failure I had I, when I was inspired by food forests is just I bought seeds from all over the world in little packets. And uh, I think like two, 200 varieties of different, from giant sequoia, 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 sequoia uh, which is yeah. not a fruit tree, I understand, but, but I just got it all, you know, like well, wherever I could get my hands on in those catalogs, in American catalogs. And uh, I soon learned that like 95% of those seeds did not propagate for me. It's quite so, so, so it was a, uh, you know, that you got a nursery. It was very uh, risky. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. you got to know what you're doing because, you know, it's it, it, planting a seed in the ground and having it germinate. Some needs to be frozen. Some you need to have like be a bug and scrape a bit of the seed or sit there with a nail yeah. file. Yeah. You know, some you have to burn. <laughs> and you got to know yeah. this stuff, you know. Um, <laughs> What is your comment on, do you get the seeds or, or do you recommend people to uh, start maybe by buying already something that's already growing? Yeah, for a lot of reasons, we buy things that are grafted and they're already growing. Maybe they're one or two years in a pot. And then um, we almost we grow almost nothing from seed unless it just comes out of our compost pit and then we'll transplant it. But we let nature do her thing. Um, when it comes to seeds and, and then we buy the existing plants. So um, yeah, what you're talking about makes complete sense to me because there's, when we take seeds from other places in the world, there's some wisdom in the germination process that nobody has figured out, right? <clears throat> we know that the seeds are, they germinate when they, they get triggered to germinate by some message that comes from the outside world. And we know like dandelions, for instance, if you've got a bloom of dandelions, that means your soil needs what the dandelions are providing and so on. So, yeah, so we start with existing trees, typically. And what, what is your recommendation like for people who absolutely have uh, like, uh, you know, very little money or they have no land, but they want to grow food for us? Is there some form of trust? Uh, as in maybe not maybe not even a good word like a land trust but maybe something else where people can come together and and and, and have a little lot of land where they can just co-grow together co-collaborate uh, in a way and share or, or is that a tricky business because you can get kicked out of your lot and uh, is there anything like that in america or you know yeah <clears throat> so there's layers to that question that i've been contemplating for a long time First of all, food security is not when we have all the food and our neighbors are starving, right? Food security is when our neighbors also have enough food to feed their kids. Mm -hmm. And so what, what we do is we give away sweet potato starts, longevity, spinach, and Okinawa spinach, and cranberry hibiscus, and moringa. Um, the sweet potato is my favorite. So a guy came, his name is Mike, great guy. He came in August of 2022 when we were just getting started. And I gave him a sprig of sweet potatoes and just a, a little vine. And he came back about three, four weeks ago. We had a barter and exchange event here at Galt's Landing. And he had 100 pounds of sweet potatoes that he had grown from that one little vine. But here's the best part. 
25 of his friends also are growing sweet potatoes from that one vine. Oh, wow. So it's exponential. Um, and what we've learned here at Gauls is the best thing we could ever do is share our abundance because what happens is people want to reciprocate. The more we serve, the more we create value, we don't even have to ask for value back. It comes automatically. Wow. So it's a completely different mindset. But you can do that with, um, you know, uh, natural things. You know, it's not like you have to give away concrete or give away something that's, you know, it, it's self-regenerative, self-multiplication, uh, self-growth. It, it just does. It, it's by itself. You, you, it, it's quite a, that's amazing with what nature can give for us. Wow. It's infinite abundance. You know, you can count the seeds in an apple, but you cannot count the apples in a single seed. It's exponential abundance. So that's the whole point of we're building these systems all over the world. And every food forest is by its very nature a nursery. So we're building these nurseries and our intention is to supplant the current food supply chain with this type of food supply chain where there's literally food everywhere. And all of the infrastructure, all of the things are already around to have it happen very quickly. It's just a matter of creating awareness that it's possible and then taking action, right? M Martin Luther King said, when those who want peace organize as well as those who want war, then we will have peace. Right. And so that's what we're doing is we're coming together with groups of Emmy Award winners and generals and all these amazing people to organize for a new food supply chain. So to get back to that question, what can people do if, uh, is there a way to grow a food forest if you don't have land? Like, yeah. can, what can one do? Is there some form of a trust or some community that they can join, that they can grow? Where do they live? I mean, I know it's a bigger question and uh, and the borders illegal, illegal, some of the illegal issues, but I want to touch onto that because, because, because people are running out of, uh, uh, the middle class is being erased right now. I'm sure you're aware. So what do those people do that are on the verge? They're, they're like what I had to do. I had to walk out of my permaculture home that I've been developing for 12 years because during COVID I couldn't sell it. And uh, I just walked out because it's becoming wow. very, very dangerous to live in South Africa during COVID because people lost their jobs. And I, up until that point, I already had nine robberies. And whether it was one person at the robot traffic light saying no job, no food, he's standing there with a cardboard. Now during COVID, there were 25 people at each traffic light doing this, no job, no food. Um, so we just packed up and we left. We stripped the pumps, gave it to another friend uh, who's in permaculture, starting a, 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 a permaculture uh, school like Jeff Lawton, uh, you know, in South Africa, we gave him the domes, the pumps, whatever we could give him, and the rest we just walked out and the bank absorbed the home. That was a really hard for me because I invested $100,000 into permaculture systems over the years into that home, and I just had to walk. Or So what can people do if they're on the verge of, like, losing it all, they're in debt, and, uh, you know, it's just not getting better? But the food, right. the, but the abundance you're talking about is like self, it's almost too good to be true. So it's two realities here. You have a reality of self-replicating, self-regenerating nature, and you have a reality on the other hand, which I'm not going to go explain, that's just imploding. Yeah. Yeah, the black rock reality is coming apart at the seams. It's imploding. Black rock is not only the name, it's the intention. Yeah. So four years ago, when this thing started, um, I was dead broke. I, I had made $20 million in the mortgage industry. I was thought I was really cool. And as soon as I learned in 2007 what was going on, I started investing all of my time and energy and money into the solution. And I failed and failed and failed. I, I got extorted by governments and, <laughs> and lawyers on multiple occasions until about, it was about, I'd say four years ago now, three and a half, four years ago, when I was at the end of it all, COVID, the government shut down my business, selling permaculture through a mall, through a kiosk. 
And I was in terror. I was scared because I have my kids to feed. I had no income and a lot of bills. And I stepped into, thanks to some divine inspiration and some good teachers, I raised my energy, my frequency, my awareness to faith and courage. And then something happened. The light shined brighter than it ever shined. And since that day, since that moment, about three and a half, four years ago, I it's been just like this. It's just been magic and miracles every day. So specifically, I wrote a letter about what my intention was, what my desires were, what my goals were. And I shared it with Del Bigtree. And okay. he, he's a guy who is a Emmy Award winning TV producer and he has his own, own network. And he did a show called Creating Abundance in Your Backyard with me. And we had a couple of designers at that time and we got real busy real fast. Um, yeah. And at the time too, I didn't have any property or any land. So I was dead broke, no income. And since then by creating a desire and then sharing that desire of beauty and abundance and how we're going to manifest it with enough people, then some people said, I want to be part of that. So anybody out there who has the desire to serve yourself, your family, your community in our world, start writing down how you're going to serve those people. And this is what I did. I brought permaculture into it as the foundation. I said, let's create a permaculture community where it's 100% off grid, where we produce all of our own food, water, and energy. I'm the expert at the food piece. We'll bring in experts at the other pieces and we'll live free. And that's what we've done. Now we have everything we need off grid, food, water, and energy. If the whole society shut down, um, we have everything we need here to thrive. Wow. And it, wow. it can happen pretty quick. So could you share a little bit about your land and your project? Uh, it sounds like you've got a, a good thing going and it's more than just a, a food forest. Yeah. Um, so we have now this 51 acre, go ahead. No, no, and, and one more thing is how do you manage like a conflict resolution? The people are so different. Uh, yeah. You know, if you are involving other people, how do you guys make sure that you don't tell each other to F all? By having no contracts and by following the permaculture principles. Um, our contracts have no violence in them. It's about talking and creating community again, creating relationships again. And, you know, legal is the undoing of God's law or natural law. So we don't follow the legal system. In fact, we've got 10 houses done, seven or seven, 10 houses under construction, seven are done. And 15 months later, we have no permits. We did not ask the government for anything. In fact, we've told the government, we're not, we're not complying with you. We're not going to pay taxes. We're not going to ask you for permission publicly. Wow. And it's, yeah, instead the free man I, thing. You're doing the free man thing, but like full on. Full on. There's no faith and courage is the armor of God. And so we're going full on and we're saying, we'll invite you in to see the right way, but we're not going to comply with any of your BS, right? Any of your program, any of your violence, any of your um spraying of toxins. Um and and so we're full on, which is done it officially. You've done it officially in a letter form, proper. Yes. In the language Which, that they understand. Yes. Oh, yeah, wow. they, they understand that they stand under this language. We have signs at the front of our property saying, you are not welcome here unless you're either invited or you have a proper jurisdictional warrant. Well, and, and then it cites case law, constitutional law. They're not showing up because... We're doing no harm. There's no reason for them to harm us. And if they do, and they might, if they do, here's what they're scared of. They're going to have a thousand cameras in their face. Our weapon is the very tool that they use to enslave us. Our weapon is the light of the truth. And we, <laughs> they don't want to be on camera because they're raw. <laughs> and they don't want to argue about it in, in public. They want to keep their argument of wickedness in the shadows. Oh, we're, we're not doing that. 
Oh wow, that that's that's so one of the first people that I've heard because I've also tried to pull on the the the, the free man move on the, on my bank on my home, and I asked them where's the sick uh, where's my original <laughs> contract, and they're like we don't have it. I'm like well you know then I don't have a bond with you. I'm not uh, you know so I stopped paying it. It took them four years to find the contract, and eventually they called me in and they said well. Uh, you know, here it is. Here's your original signature. And I was stupid enough. I didn't turn the paper around and see the indent. It might have been a, you know, but they showed me my signature. I mean, it's so easy so to fake a signature. I don't remember what I signed back in 2007, yeah. believe it or not. That's yeah. when I got my bond on the peak of prices <laughs> in 2008 at yeah. half. <laughs> so it was really yeah. not a good move with uh, property. But yeah, eventually I had such a big thing clocked up and because I didn't want to study that reel of documents uh, in South Africa, Johan and Jobert and Michael Tellinger were pioneering this stuff and you know you got to learn, you got to know the stuff to pull off just for everybody out there to pull off what Jim pulled off you got to know your shit because uh, if you're not speaking their language they you know you have no like yeah they can easily like they told me sorry buddy pay up and i just had to pay up you know and there's levels of strategy that we are employing for instance we put a food forest at a local school right? mm -hmm. we are helping our neighbors eat we're doing a lot of service wow. for the community so now the community is a hundred percent behind us they're like this okay is okay so that whole thing of you only get bust when your neighbor calls in your neighbor doesn't call in because they're like, hey, yeah. Jim is our brother. Why yeah. would they want to call and say he's building some structure that's like, you know, you know what I mean? That's the biggest thing. The, 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 the building authority does not come unless your neighbor calls in. That's the biggest research I've done in America. That's yeah. brilliant, Jim. So your, your, your approach is much, very much a multidimensional. Multidimensional with the ultimate dimension. And you cited this earlier. Sun Tzu, the art of war, know thyself, know thy enemy, a thousand battles, a thousand victories. I, I've sat with that, meditated on that for a, multiple times throughout the years. Know thyself, know thy enemy, a thousand battles, a thousand victories. Now, am I going to argue with the most cited military strategist in the history of the world? Or am I going to just sit with that and say, what does that mean? And here's what the multidimensional thing it means to me is that we are the divine we are part of the creator we are part of the omnipotence and omnipresence of the power um and so i stand as a free man declaring that no matter what i signed under coercion and manipulation and lies it's all bullshit and i am now awake and aware and I'm simply saying, no, I am a free man and I'm serving the land. I'm serving myself, my family, my friends and my community. And if you want to have a debate, then it's not going to be through the legal system. It's going to be through the lawful system, through the community that we have. And they don't want that debate. Yeah, because they have no right. You, you, they, have nothing, they have nothing to go against. On the one side, they've got a community as benefiting. You're giving out seedlings you you're planting a food forest in the local school and they're not and they're coming to bust your ass and it's like it's just energetically just uh it outweighs you nailed it energetically right what, what tesla said factors in you know if you want to find the secrets of the universe think in terms of energy frequency and vibration well the word think is misplaced if you want to find the secrets of the universe feel experience the energy the frequency and the vibration in the now because this is the only thing that's real is right now and when we stand in that full connection that present which is the gift from god right it sounds corny but this is where all the power is when we stand in our power then we've already won yeah wow wow that's so inspiring so what you're saying is that other communities, other people who want to um, follow that, that that's a good model to actually, that's actually the best model that I've heard so far. 
it's really yeah. cool do some service to the local um local public uh, you know municipality that they benefit set up a little garden here and there and 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 do your thing but obviously yeah. some states are a bit more you know so it's yeah. also doing some research for some of the more lenient pocket of freedoms uh any comments on that like, yeah but i'm trying to say the washington dc might be difficult to go and crank up because you'll have a bulldoze on your step yeah if um i were in minnesota or washington or california i might be in jail right now um but i'm not and here here i am but at the same time that's what putting this network is all about together right bringing in like i was just asked by a green beret of famous really awesome guy his name is doc pete chambers first doctor to become a green beret he asked me to do a video um or do a, a shout out an invite to the group of generals and high level brass that just crafted and signed the declaration of military accountability and so i did and you know i reached out to bobby kennedy and he's the team just called me and said he's coming here in the next couple of months um, so we've got all these folks around to support this transition throughout the whole network. So if somebody is in one of those places and we shine enough light on the benefits that they're doing for the land, for the bees, for all of it, then that will be the protection that everybody needs. Is It's each other. We are each other's keepers and protectors. Okay, so what you're saying is the network is very powerful. How does one organize all these people in, I mean, obviously we have the tools, we have the CRM tools, we have uh, Telegram with multiple groups and, 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 and all of that. How do you guys organize this network of people that uh, it's not chaotic, that I don't have to read 10,000 messages that I can just, who is who and where do I go to decision makers? How does it work? So we're attracting and convening with a council of 12. And the council includes, this is the most amazing group of people. Um, in fact, I don't know if you've ever heard of Joel Salatin. Yeah. Okay, he's coming here on Thursday. Um, he hasn't officially said yes yet, but I'm pretty sure he will because um, what we've done, we've got investors around us and we're bringing this council together. Uh, Theo Fleury, uh, Olympic champ, Stanley Cup champ and trauma expert. Uh, Pat Militich, soil savior, five-time UFC world champion, um, and then all these different other people. And we're bringing them together and we're creating a side platform like Facebook for freedom, where everybody who has a product or service and basically um, adapts with or advocates for the permaculture ethics, earth care, people care, and fair share. Now, the word share has been corrupted. So I like to say voluntary share. Mm -hmm. um, so when we bring people together with these ethics and then the principles of how to put it all together, um, and then we shine a light on each other's works, right? Marjorie Wildcraft and all these amazing people. We have all of the solutions. Lisa Mullison, you know, Bill Mullison? Yeah, yeah. his wife, Lisa, is one of our council members. Oh, wow. Okay. The late Bill Mollison, um, the founder of Permaculture. I've so, seen Bill Mollison's garden after 30 years. Jeff Lawson actually went and bush tracked through it, and it was just exactly what you were describing. It was a bit messy, but there were fruit growing everywhere. Right? It's just, yeah, yeah. it's like a garden of eating food everywhere. You just cut trails, right? Because it does, it, it closes in, turns into a jungle. So um, we're creating this platform and it'll be basically the permaculture platform where everybody can find all of the services and all of the products and all of the education and training related to how to go from where we are now to a completely free society to peace on earth. Um, in it's fact, something be, else. I'll, go ahead. It's going to be well organized then because I, I know started, I tried to start up a new platform. It was so difficult. Uh, yeah. You know, I'd rather join your platform and, and help how I can. Um, yeah, it's got to be well and, organized visually and everything because because yeah. people don't have time for like new things unless they're working like just exactly. really well. And simple. Yeah, and it's not my platform. It was an idea that came through me, but it's going to be humanity's platform. The whole thing will be owned in trust, in an earth trust. 
and it will be stewarded by these count the council members, the 12 stewards. Um, and then they will change and rotate out um, in, on some logical term, maybe two years or four years. Um, but um, there's so many layers that are coming into this now with the TV show that just got funded, our first episode. We're gonna, everybody's gonna be shining a light on this platform. And then here's the, the most fun part for me is when we create a yield, we are gonna reinvest the surplus into putting food forests in schools and prisons and community centers publicly on camera. And so we're gonna show the world that investing in this platform, which is where all the solutions are, is beneficial to them on the individual level, the family level, the community level, and the global level. Um, I even, isn't that that fun? That's amazing, but I'd like you to comment on, uh, I I, uh, I think Joe Joe Salatin said that um, uh, some of the things you wanted to do are illegal now, or what are the implications? What laws have changed? It's actually one of the questions. What laws have changed that making it food forest gardening like more difficult in america um are they are they throttling down on on us they're they're trying to get everybody to register their gardens and every freedom lover i know said shut up (laughs) are you kidding me but here's what um, i don't pay any attention to the legal system i really don't pay any attention to politics i just don't care because i don't it's irrelevant to me i don't follow those rules um, I actually, this is something that has come through me. There's so many things that have come through that are just, I pinch myself. And, and sometimes I say, what's going on? And then I remember instantly that I've spent 30 years obsessed with figuring this out. Presence being the ultimate thing to figure out. When we are enlightened, which simply means to me, right? It means that my mind is not controlled by any fear or manipulation or programs. Do I catch programs running? Often. And when I do, I go, gone. And then I'm present again. Um, but this campaign strategy came through. And when I met with Bobby Kennedy, I, I, I said, Bobby, I've got a campaign strategy that will create peace on earth in 12 months. And he goes, what, what are you talking about? So he sat down on the couch and I laid it out. When we put food for us, and as a campaigner, if he's campaigning surrounded by kids, And he's making the big claim, I'm going to take all the poisons out of the school lunches and school land, and we are, the kids are going to learn how to plant their own food and grow some of their own food. This has been duplicated thousands of times around the world. And in every case, they've studied this, the children are better off than in schools that don't do this. Yeah. Right. So now he just, he just reversed childhood diabetes and and drug use and all of the negatives. Right, that's one campaign stop. Now let's go to the prisons. Imagine him or some big politician standing with a bunch of inmates and they're growing their own food. As a result of this being done in the past, the recidivism rate goes down by more than 60%. Because they so see just, a way of when they come out of what they can do. They see, they see a light at the end of the tunnel. Yes. Yeah. And they're also growing poison free foods and they're eating healthier and they're connected again. So exactly what you said. And so it's the ultimate stack of functions. But here's how we get peace on Earth. And this is where um, I'm going to talk about when it comes very clearly. I said we need to elevate the narrative away from genocide, away from war, away from support, any war. We need to elevate like Gandhi did to that of peace. Gandhi wasn't against war. He just knew that that wasn't the answer. Right. So we need to elevate to actually show the strategy where colonialism is tyranny. It's terror. Right. So imagine a presidential candidate that says we are going to close all the army bases while I'm president around the world. We're going to turn them into food forest demonstration sites. We're going to take the current energy that's going into destruction and tyranny and war and control and fear And we're going to create a food forest. We're going to bring in the local leaders, the good ones, the ethical ones. And we are going to hand over this nursery to them. Scarcity is the recruitment tool for war. Scarcity creates fear. 
fear creates disease and disease. And then when people don't know how they're going to feed their kids, then they will join the war and they'll fight the yeah. tyrannical, right? Which... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Europe is going in next, probably Poland, into the burning, into the combustion chamber, like the country that I cannot mention next, next door to us. Um, yeah, 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 exactly. I, I feel exactly the same. Uh, w w this is where they're going. But Jim, uh, you know, in a more reality sense, every single president that tried to do something truly, truly good has been shot. Dead. Yeah, yeah. And there's something absolutely powerful about this where um, Kennedy's already going after these people, supposedly. Now, I'm completely aware of the controlled opposition narrative. I'm completely aware of all that. It's irrelevant because everybody can be inspired. Or maybe irrelevant isn't the right word. Maybe it's relevant. But this elevates above that. When we recognize that we are not this, that this is a temporary experience, that we are playing a divine game of sorts, and this is just a character in the game. This is nothing. The ego will be shoved off like a tattered old suit. And I will, and I am now aware of a bigger consciousness. When Kennedy speaks from that platform, or anybody, quite frankly, speaks from that platform and says, we are going to, in a very public, here's what we're going to do. And then the influencers come around and support this. When this happens, it'll be like a supernova. Because it will be so logical, so true, and so provable, so demonstrable, so inspiring and empowering that the world will change that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The... Well, it's, uh, you're speaking to the converted because I think last week we've had a, a major shift with Tucker Carlson coming to our country and doing the interview that over a billion people saw in three days. That has not happened for like ever. You know, yeah. Yeah. and I think there was a shift and our country, you know, I don't want to like uh, brainwash anybody, but uh, I believe there is a lot of truth. You know, yeah. there is a lot of truth being spoken of. Uh, uh, and that's important when you stand for truth. Um, one of the bloggers I listened to said that to promote a lie takes a thousand times more energy than to promote the truth because yes. truth just rings. Yes. And that's yeah, why it opens the heart. Exactly. Yeah. The feeding that you it opens the heart that the lies like you, you, you have to like CNN, BBC, go, 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 go billions of dollars on Facebook ads, all ads. And then it's like, ah, uh, doesn't feel right. Truth you say, it's, it's like, yes, yes, yes. It's inspiring. It, the heart opens. Yeah. Everybody can be inspired. Right. And that's the fun part. That's my knowing. I saw in his eyes. I saw him go. Like I saw him take it in and he changed a little bit that moment on several occasions, actually, while I was talking to him, because I laid out the community centers like here. And when I'm talking about infrastructure here in Florida, the state budget is $90 billion a year, right? 5% of that money. And that's supposed to be to serve the people. Well, if he took 5% of that money that was taken by force and violence, right? The threat of co <laughs> of taxation, which is a, a, a thievery thing. But if 5% over four years went into putting food forests around Florida, that would be 18,000 $1 million food forest installations over four years. Wow. That's every school. That's every prison. That's every opportunity zone. That's every city park. That's everybody in Florida having access to free food forevermore and habitat and bees and butterflies and birds and life and frequency and symphony it's all explodes right so it's already here it's just a matter of turning the dial and inspiring and that's what's already happening we are experiencing the apocalypse the ascension of human consciousness the great awakening right now and so yeah i, I think it's inevitable um I, I'm still pushing because I'm not, my only scarcity now is this idea of time is of the essence. Do we, how much time do we have? I don't know the answer to that, but that's why I'm pushing and enjoying the, the process. At the same time, as you say that we are this divine soul that never dies, correct? That just changes clothes. Um, and by the way, I believe the ego stays with us until we work through it. 
and that the ego stays with us through multiple bodies and multiple lives. I've done a process where like I committed suicide in the process. I rode off in my bicycle into the pond, tied myself to a bicycle, I died and I rose and that burning sensation inside my heart that was like trauma and stuff I carry, I thought it was going to switch off. It didn't. I rose above my body and I'm just as burning as hell. <laughs> and I'm like, shit, but I can't change anything because when I'm in my body, I can do processes. I can, there's some processes I'll share with you next time, but I can do stuff to work through my ego. When I'm out of my body, I couldn't do anything. I could just observe this. I could feel the pain. I see my body there under the freaking lake tied to a bicycle. And I'm burning with this ego stuff just eating me away. And I can't change anything until I come back to earth again and re 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 reincarnate and reborn. Well, that's the experience I had in the process that I did, uh, oh, you know, because I, I wanted to, you know, take my life away. So my wife suggested, well, why don't you do a process? and live it through without doing it, you know, and yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's what I got to. And then I, I, I forgot about ever committing suicide again, because that bur that painful, that pain that we carry usually sits somewhere here to about heart chakra, it big burns that eats at us. It's a stuff that makes our legs shake uh, and, 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 and a lot more. It doesn't go away. <laughs> that's a shit. That's amazing. Yeah. I've heard that same thing from my teacher, Sunya Murthy, and many different teachers saying the exact same thing. So that makes complete sense. Uh, the other thing I like to share is that everything I'm doing in a system of abundance, like we have free energy everywhere, everything I'm doing is selfish because the more I serve, the more I love, the more I feel joy and share that joy, the more joy I feel, right? So there's no scarcity in the system that I'm talking about. It's hundred percent abundant. Wow. Wow. I'd love to take some of these lessons uh, uh, also because I have so many designs I could share with people, uh, you know, um, so many, so much wisdom with regards to bio architecture. I, you know, I spent 12 years trying to build a school of bio architecture and permaculture in South Africa. And eventually I left the country and I'm obviously doing very similar thing here. But it feels like um, we need we need pilot centers where people can come and experience. Like even Jacques Fresco's Venus project, although his final vision did not succeed, you know, they still build something and they have some models, uh, you know, small models. And even now Roxanne Meadows, which who I met actually in Moscow, she came for uh, one of the summits here on uh, new types of cities um yeah they are doing still tours in florida i mean you, you'd know better but uh lots of uh, people are going through and being inspired so we need a uh, centers where we can show practical uh practically what the hell you're talking about <laughs> what, on, exactly, what on earth are you talking about yeah yeah that's exactly what we're doing. So we've got these replicas of Gauls Landing now going up in Thailand and Africa. We would love to have one going in Russia. Um, my partner, Marcel, would probably be interested in being involved in that. Um, Canada, the United States, and we're putting them all over the world. And every one becomes a seed of abundance, a place of education and demonstration and community and all of it coming together around this nursery that propagates infinitely. I have a couple questions about Russia that I've been curious about for a while. Is it true that uh, Putin made glyphosate illegal in the country? Uh, I can't comment on that, but I believe GMOs are illegal. But I, I'll research okay. and come back to you. I'll research. Okay. Uh, if GMOs are illegal, then in a way, it's the same thing because that's how they they go together. One of the qu quick questions I have is, are they spraying chemtrails in Russia or the skies above you? No, nothing. It's all clean. I see one strip now and then, but I really believe it, it fades out so fast. I really believe it's 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 truly the the the, 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 the fog or whatever. It yes, just contrail. No, yeah. no, there's none of that. There's none of that. I actually wanted to film uh, a, a few days ago. I wanted to show guys, look, you know, it's all clean. It's a clean sky. It's beautiful. That's that's fantastic. Well, you guys are doing some neat stuff. Some stuff right. And the, the war, the narrative here is all about, you know, war, 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 China, Russia, China, Russia. 
it, our whole thing is to elevate to peace. When we spend a fraction of that amount of energy talking about the solution, which is regenerative agriculture as the first domino, then we win.